What I don't like about DJ Pro's version 4 update. They made a lot of good changes, but there's some stuff that I just can't stand. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys why. The version 4 update of DJ Pro is out. And a lot of people have been commenting me, commenting on my videos, horror stories about what happened when they were trying to DJ with this new update. Some people said they were DJing in front of a whole crowd and the their controller wasn't getting read by the iPad when before the update everything was fine. I've also heard that they were there was random loops getting triggered and all this stuff that is making the app unreliable, which when we're DJing, it's very important that we that the music doesn't cut off, that all, everything is working correctly because we want to perform for our audience and not look like we're an amateur and not look like we don't know what we're doing. So if the app is going to glitch and not be able to do what we're used to doing, I could understand why a lot of DJs are getting frustrated. Also, there was some stuff with the user interface when you plug in the controller that I think is unnecessary. I wish they would have left it alone, and I'll show you guys that in a second. But first of all, now that we're on classic mode, if you look for the differences in classic mode, there is none. So I think this was a huge opportunity. This is one of my favorite screens. A lot of people that follow my channel used to DJ with turntables and mixers, so they really appreciate this classic layout. And I think there was definitely room for them to update it and overhaul it because this really hasn't been changed since DJ Pro AI came out. So I would like to see in the next updates them kind of spice up this classic mode and make it a little bit more functional, functionable and I think they can make it a little bit better. And now let's move on over to Pro Mode. So they changed 2 deck mode to Pro Mode but the only thing that they changed was these jog wheels. They say that they are new advanced performance jog wheels and they made such a big deal about it, but I just think it's distracting. The BP BPM and the times, at first I liked it, I thought this is awesome, this is like Serato, but as I've been DJing with it, it kind of was bothering me and the numbers kind of were distracting me from DJing, so I wish they would have left the jog wheels the same. They give you the ability to adjust them. If you go over here to appearance, you could do jog wheels. You could do an extended one. You could do dark. So I'm going to leave it on extended. At least if it's going to be distracting and annoying, at least I have more range of motion for scratching. So the jog wheels, I don't think it was necessary. I think maybe they should have changed the... They should have changed the jog wheels on the classic mode because these ones have the most potential. Right. Another thing that I don't like is I don't like the new Q section. I think it's a little bit hard to read and I don't like the way it's laid out down there. I also don't like how the instant effects is. It looks very distracting. It's hard to see what it is. It's really cool that they added all these new effects. But a lot of these effects are just, they just sound like noise and they're kind of hard to use. I'll make a separate video on the, the effects that I recommend using, the new ones. And I'll leave out the other ones because I don't think you could do anything with them. Like hydrant, alarm, rocket, landing. I don't think it was necessary. I think maybe they should have gave us new sample and looper packs which they did not, which I feel like is another huge opportunity that they lost because the looper and the sampler is a big part of DJ Pro, and they could have improved that a little bit more. Another thing that I do not like is over here, they made this filter, they kind of made it look dark. I don't know why they made it more hard, hard to see. I don't think that was necessary, and I don't like that they changed that. And now let's get to the thing that bothers me the most. When, when you plug in a controller, now it changes the whole user interface. And I don't think that's necessary because if you, most people, they'll download the app, start DJing on the iPad, and once they get into it and decide that this is something that I want to do and pursue a little bit more, 
then they'll update to a controller and why would you change the interface with a controller if you're used to DJing this way let's say you downloaded the app you've been practicing for two weeks DJing with this interface now <clears throat> you got your controller you go to plug in your controller and it's like a completely different app so now it's going to throw you off with the controls and the buttons that you're used to. The whole point of DJing with the iPad is because the iPad is another extension of your controller. So I would DJ with this controller right underneath the iPad on a stand. And what this would do is all the buttons and knobs that are missing from this controller, you could access on the iPad. So one of those main controls that I would use on the iPad when I was using this controller were the volume faders. So how dare they take away the volume faders, which are one of the most important things to any DJ. I do understand that most controllers like this Reloop Buddy have these great volume sliders, but it still sometimes is easier to just use the ones on the screen. So I don't know why they would ever think of getting rid of that. Also, the, the controls that you're used to, the effects and stuff, I feel like they made it more difficult. I get what they were doing. They wanted to make it make they wanted you to have the functions that they thought would be useful when you're using a controller and then they either made things really small that they thought you wouldn't use like these tiny little play buttons, tiny little cue buttons because they expect you to use them on the controller. But I think this takes away it takes away from the app because now you can't do certain stuff that you're used to when you have a controller. So yesterday I wanted to try out the new settings with the controller and I went to DJ and it, I was really thrown off and I was completely out of my zone and looking for stuff on the screen and not really knowing where it is. And that could be the most frustrating thing, especially for a DJ that's been DJing with this app for a while and got used to the way it was. Now I will say that when DJ when DJ Pro came out, uh, the update after DJ D, uh, DJ Two, so there was DJ Two, and then they updated to DJ Pro, and then and the whole interface changed. And I just didn't want to update it. I was stuck. I was used to the way that the old app was, and then finally, after time, I finally updated it, and then I got used to it, and I ended up liking it better and using all the great new features. So hopefully this is how it's gonna be with this new update. Let me know in the comments any of the horror stories that you had with um, a lot of people were saying that the parameters weren't, weren't working on some effects, uh, various controllers were having issues. They did release a version 4.1 that they said was supposed to fix all these problems and maybe they'll release another version to get rid of any additional problems. But for now, I keep looking at the comments on my videos and a lot of people aren't that thrilled about the new update. So if you want to learn more about DJ Pro and all the stuff that you could do with DJing on the iPad and all the new features with the new update, subscribe to my channel and give this video a like.